No matter what size your dog is, I know that he has a big heart. And although I am in general referring to the metaphorical sense of the word, some dogs do actually have a big heart. But this can be detrimental to the health if not addressed early enough. So make sure to watch this video as I'll be explaining exactly what congestive heart failure in dogs is as well as the clinical signs, causes, diagnosis, treatment and prevention methods so that you can better equip yourself and be able to buy some extra high quality time with your beloved pet. Now it goes without saying that the heart is the single most important organ of the body. It is the engine that fuels the car. If the engine dies, the car stops moving. It is a magnificent product of engineering that is designed to pump blood through the arteries towards all the organs whilst accepting blood coming towards the heart through the veins. Kind of similar to a closed system of pipes running through the body. Now the heart itself is a muscular organ consisting out of four chambers the left atria, right atria, left ventricle and right ventricle. The right atria receives blood that is deprived of oxygen from the rest of the body, pumps it to the right ventricle which then propels it towards the lungs where the blood is then filled with oxygen again. After this it goes into the left atria which pumps it into the left ventricle which then eventually propels it towards the rest of the body by means of the aorta. The left atria and left ventricle as well as the right atria and right ventricle are separated by special valves that prevents the blood from moving in the wrong direction. Now it is usually here where the problem starts. When dogs get older these valves start to degenerate and eventually becomes misformed which will eventually result in them failing in their function. Now depending on which valve it is that fails this can either result in left heart failure if the mitral valve is affected or right heart failure if the tricuspid valve is affected. Now when blood gets pumped from the one chamber to the next, the defective valve will cause some of the blood to be pushed back into the previous chamber. Now remember, the circulatory system is a closed system. So when this happens, this causes pressure to build up in these chambers, which will lead to an increased pressure on the muscles of the heart, and this will eventually result in the heart needing to pump much more harder to get the blood to where it needs to go into the body. This back damming of blood is what we refer to being congested in congestive heart failure. Now the heart should be able to cope pretty fine with this increase in workload for a while and the dog usually shows no clinical symptoms. But at some stage down the line, the heart will become overwhelmed and will start to weaken and thus not be able to cope with the increased workload anymore. And this will set off a chain of events that will eventually result in your dog showing clinical signs. It is usually around this time that the pet owner starts to notice that something is wrong with their pet. So in essence, congestive heart failure refers to the heart's inability to pump enough blood throughout the body in order to prevent the circulatory system from backing up. Now congestive heart failure can be quite a scary diagnosis to receive from your veterinarian. And although many breeds are prone to developing this condition later in their life, this diagnosis can be containable with proper treatment and lifestyle management. However, it is really important to recognize the clinical signs of congestive heart failure early on so that treatment can be started promptly in order to give your beloved dog the best chance of having a longer extended life. Now, apart from chronic valvular disease, congestive heart failure may also develop due to abnormal heart rhythms nutritional disorders such as taurine deficiency and certain hereditary factors affecting the heart muscle as well as major blood vessels leading to and from the heart. Small dog breeds are more prone to developing congestive heart failure due to degenerative valvular disease aka mitral valve insufficiency and large dog breeds are more prone to developing congestive heart failure due to dilated heart muscles aka dilated cardiomyopathy. Heart conditions do more frequently occur in older animals, but some conditions such as heartworm, bacterial infections affecting the heart valves, and obesity may predispose younger animals to developing congestive heart failure at a much earlier age. Now the clinical signs that your dog will show will largely depend on what side of the heart is affected. With left-sided heart failure, the blood in the left atria will push back into the lungs which will result in fluid accumulation in the lungs, also known as pulmonary edema. 
This will result in difficulty breathing, persistent coughing, reduced stamina, exercise intolerance, fainting, and just overall lethargy. With right side heart failure, the blood in the right atria will start to push back into the rest of the body, leading to fluid accumulation in body cavities, such as a swollen belly, also known as ascites, and some fluid may actually start to leak out of the veins in the limbs, leading to swelling, also known as peripheral edema. Now it is important to know that mitral valve insufficiency will start out as left-sided congestive heart failure, but if left untreated, this heart failure may progress to involve both sides. So your dog may eventually show clinical signs of both sides. Your vet will start off with a full clinical examination where he will listen very carefully to the heart and the lungs. Patients with congestive heart failure typically have a heart murmur with or without concurrent crackling sounds of the lungs, which is easily audible with a stethoscope. This heart murmur sound is basically due to the increase in turbulence of blood flow among the malfunctioning valves. Your pet may also have a slight purple tinge to the tongue color, pointing towards a lack of oxygen supply to the rest of the body. You may also have an increased heart rate and increase in blood pressure due to the increase in workload on the heart. Now these findings will typically encourage your vet to perform further diagnostic tests such as a thoracic x-ray to assess the heart's size, an ultrasound of the heart also known as an echocardiogram to look at the structure of the heart chambers and an electrocardiogram also known as an ECG in order to assess the electrical currents in the heart muscle in order to determine any abnormalities in electrical cardiac conduction which in its turn underlies the heart's ability to beat and in some cases your vet may also opt to perform blood tests in order to assess the kidney and liver function as the other organs may also be affected by the heart's inability to pump enough oxygenated blood towards the rest of the body. Now it is important to treat heart failure in order to improve heart muscle performance, control arrhythmias and blood pressure, improve blood flow and to reduce the amount of blood filling the heart before each contraction. It is also necessary to remove the excess fluid from the lungs, the chest cavity and the abdomen. Now the treatment will depend on the exact underlying cause of the heart disease. If your dog is in a respiratory crisis, you will first need to be hospitalized and placed in an intensive care unit in an oxygen cage until he is stable enough to go home. If the congestive heart failure is due to mitral valve insufficiency, your dog may be put on pimobendin, which is a positive inotrope that strengthens the heart's ability to contract and improves blood flow, a diuretic such as furosemide that reduces the amount of fluid buildup in the lungs, and an ACE inhibitor such as enalapril that basically relaxes the blood vessels in the rest of the body, thereby reducing the blood pressure and enabling the heart to pump more easily. Your vet may recommend supplements such as vitamin B, taurine or carnitine, as well as antioxidants such as coenzyme Q and vitamin E to help support the heart. Nutrition also plays a vital role in the management of patients with congestive heart failure and the overall nutritional goal should be to include an adequate amount of calories, a balanced amount of sodium in the diet and the supplementation of omega-3 fatty acids in order to reduce the inflammation and to control the arrhythmias. In dogs with severe congestive heart failure that has an excessive amount of accumulation of fluid in the thoracic cavity or abdomen, there are surgical procedures available known as a thoracosynthesis or abdominosynthesis, where basically a needle is inserted into the chest cavity or the abdomen and the excessive fluid is drawn out which will result in a rapid improvement of clinical signs. Surgical intervention methods are also available to fix acquired and congenital heart valve diseases in selected patients at specialist facilities. What is also very important is to reduce and eliminate the amount of stress in your dog's environment as much as possible. Do not over-exercise your dog and if he gets regular respiratory fits, then consider speaking to your veterinarian and asking for anti-anxiety medication to help keep him calm during these respiratory crises. Unfortunately, there are currently no real preventative methods for congestive heart failure in dogs and treatment is primarily aimed at improving the dog's quality of life. With that said, the prognosis for congestive heart failure in dogs used to be very poor but this had vastly improved over the years due to advances in the medication used to treat the condition. 
If you are living in an area where heartworm is present, then make sure your dog receives his heartworm medication regularly. And if your dog is definitely diagnosed with congestive heart failure, then make sure to take him back for regular checkups so that your vet can monitor the effects of the medication on your dog's condition and so that he can adjust the treatment protocol where necessary. Now, vigilant lifestyle management and proper home care may help to extend your dog's chances of survival from months to many, many years. And again, the earlier congestive heart failure is detected and treatment is started, the higher the chances of you extending your dog's life. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know down in the comments if you ever had a dog that suffered from congestive heart failure and what you and your vet did to help him. And if you found this video to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you can leave a like on this video and share it with your friends and your family. And if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing as I'll be posting new videos on interesting pet related topics every week. And as always, have a lucky day and I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers!